Hi, this is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisperer, and lesson 10 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam. Today we go over the T3A questions, which cover radio wave characteristics. And uh, ready? Let's get going. The T3A section covers how a radio signal travels, distinctions of HF, VHF, and UHF, fading, multipath, wavelength versus penetration, and antenna orientation. All right, the first question, what should you do if another operator reports that your station's two meter signals were strong just a moment ago, but now they're weak or distorted? All right, if you've ever pulled up to a stoplight in a downtown street and notice that your, your car radio all of a sudden gets a little staticky, and then as soon as you start moving, it gets clear again, well, it's the same type of idea. Essentially, radio waves can reflect off things and sometimes can cause distortion. Now, the key thing to remember here is you try moving a few feet and see if that doesn't solve the problem. Why are UHF signals often more effective from inside buildings than VHF signals? Well, UHF signals are smaller wavelength than VHF, and what this does is it gives them more penetrating power, especially at short distances. Now, the shorter wavelength and increased penetrating power makes them more effective inside building structures. What antenna polarization is normally used for long distance weak signal, CW, and single sideband contacts using the VHF and UHF bands? All right. Antenna polarization is usually how your antenna is oriented compared to the ground plane, which is usually the Earth. Now, the two big polarizations are horizontal and vertical polarization. Antennas like dipoles and other wire antennas, which are parallel to the Earth or the ground plane, are usually hor horizontally oriented. Vertical antennas are vertically oriented. For long distance weak, weak signal, CW and single sideband on UHF and VHF, horizontal polarization is the best. What can happen if the antennas at opposite ends of a VHF or UHF line of sight radio link are not using the same polarization? All right, sit back and think about this. Imagine trying to throw a plate through a slot between two boards. Now, if the slot is horizontal, you want to throw the plate horizontally. If the slot is vertical, you want to throw the plate vertically. If you throw a plate horizontally towards a vertical slot, the plate's going to crash. So now, some of the plate may get through the slot, but most of it won't. You're just going to have broken pieces all over the place. Now, antenna polarization is kind of the same way. If two differently polarized antennas are sending signals at each other, the signal that is received could be significantly weaker if the polarizations are different, So, especially with line of sight VHF or UHF. When using a directional antenna, how might your station be able to access a distant repeater if buildings or obstructions are blocking the direct line of sight path? Now, radio waves can bounce off objects to include the moon, and that's called moon bounce, and that's a different subject. However, if something is obstructing the direct line of sight of a repeater, you can try pointing your antenna at something that's going to reflect the signals towards that repeater, like a mountain or another large building. You just got to have the right angle and enough power. What term is commonly used to describe the rapid fluttering sound sometimes heard from mobile stations that are moving while transmitting? All right, this is called picket fencing. And you kind of think of the sound of running a stick along the side of a picket fence. This is to a, due to a dynamic between the radio waves and the movement of the vehicle during the transmission. And just remember, picket fencing. What type of wave carries radio signals between transmitting and receiving stations? The answer is electromagnetic waves carry radio signals. And it's the only answer on the exam that even sounds vaguely familiar or makes any sense. Now, electromagnetic waves and their propagation are the center of any type of radio communication. And the challenge of ham radio is trying to figure out how to get electromagnetic waves to do exactly what you want them to do. And sometimes it's harder than others. Which of the following is a likely cause of irregular fading of signals received by ionospheric reflection? The answer is random combining of signals arriving via different path lengths. And what this essentially breaks down to as is that as signals bounce off the ionosphere, Sometimes waves of similar frequencies can interfere with each other, so they can basically amplify or cancel each other out. And what this results in is that it kind of produces an irregular fading of the signal. So if your equipment is good, your feed lines are good, and your antenna is good, and you're experiencing kind of an irregular fading, it could be random combining of signals arriving via different path lengths. So what is the likely cause of a regular fading of signals received by ionospheric reflection? Random combining of signals arriving via different path lengths. Which of the following results from the fact that skip signals refracted from the ionosphere are elliptically polarized? The answer is either vertically or horizontally polarized antennas may be used for transmission or reception. 
Now, this sounds kind of a complicated question, but the first thing you need to know to answer this question correctly is that radio waves will bounce off things. And especially from the HF bands, um, radio waves can bounce off the ionosphere, and that's a great way to get long-distance communications. Now, the other thing you need to know is you have to think back to the antenna polarization. So a vertical antenna will generally produce a vertically polarized signal, and a horizontal, a horizontal antenna, like a dipole, will generally produce a horizontally polarized signal. So horizontal, horizontal antennas generally are better at picking up horizontally polarized signals, and vertical antennas are generally better at picking up vertically uh, polarized signals. However, when a signal bounce off, bounces off the ionosphere, its polarization just gets all out of whack, and it becomes what they call elliptically polarized. And this means that it can be picked up equally well from either a vertical or a horizontal polarized antenna. So, which of the following results from the fact that skip signals refracted from the ionosphere are elliptically polarized? Either vertically or horizontally polarized antennas may be used for transmission or reception. What may occur if VHF or UHF data signals propagate over multiple paths? The answer is error rates are likely to increase. And we talked about this earlier, how signals from multiple path lengths can interfere with each other and cause irregular fading. Well, when that happens when you use data modes, it increases the error rate on the message that you're sending. So if you think data equals computer, which equals error, that'll help you answer the question correctly. But what may occur if VHF or UHF data signals propagate over multiple paths? Error rates are likely to increase. Which part of the atmosphere enables the propagation of radio signals around the world? All right, we talked about this a little bit. It's the ionosphere is the big one. There's a D, E, and F layer, layer, and we'll get into that in a later lesson. Um, some of the layers are affected by sunlight. They, they charge them. That has certain effects on different bands. The memory trick is that ionosphere and amateur both start with vowels. That worked for me. It's tacky, but it could help you. Think of your own, but the answer to this question is ionosphere. And we are done with the review, and it's time for the T3A quiz. So take out a pencil and paper in number 1 through 11. I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick, so if you need more time, pause the video. When you're done with the quiz, you can go to hamwhisperer.com and go to the exam answers page under the T3A link, and you can find the answer to this quiz. And with that said, let's get started with the quiz. Question 1. What should you do if another operator reports that your station's 2 meter signals were strong just a moment ago, but now they are weak or distorted? A. Change the batteries in your radio to a different type. B. Turn on the CTCSS tone. C. Ask the other operator to adjust his squelch control. Or D. Try moving a few feet or changing the direction of your antenna if possible, as reflections may be causing multipath distortion. Question 2. Why are UHF signals often more effective from inside buildings than VHF signals? A. VHF signals lose power faster over distance. B. The shorter wavelength allows them to more easily penetrate the structure of the buildings. C. This is incorrect. VHF works better than UHF inside buildings. Or D. UHF antennas are more efficient than VHF antennas. Question 3. What antenna polarization is normally used for long distance weak signal CW and single sideband contacts using the VHF and UHF bands? A, right hand circular, B, left hand circular, C, horizontal, or D, vertical? Question four, what can happen if the antennas at opposite ends of a VHF or UHF line of sight radio link are not using the same polarization? A, the modulation sidebands might become inverted, B. Signals could be significantly weaker. C. Signals have an echo effect on voices. D. Nothing significant will happen. Question 5. When using a directional antenna, how might your station be able to access a distant repeater if buildings or obstructions are blocking the direct line of sight path? A. Change from vertical to horizontal polarization. B. Try to find a path that reflects signals to the repeater. C. Try the long path. D. Increase the antenna SWR. Question 6. What term is commonly used to describe the rapid fluttering sound sometimes heard from mobile stations that are moving while transmitting? A. Flip-flopping. B. Picket fencing. C. Frequency shifting. Or D. Pulsing. Question 7. What type of wave carries radio signals between transmitting and receiving stations? A. Electromagnetic. B. Electrostatic. C. Surface acoustic. Or D. Magnetostrictive. 
Question 8. Which of the following is the likely cause of irregular fading of signals received by ionospheric reflection? A. Frequency shift due to Faraday rotation. B. Interference from thunderstorms. C. Random combining of signals arriving via different paths. Or D. Intermodulation distortion. Question 9. Which of the following results from the fact that skip signals refracted from the ionosphere are elliptically polarized? A. Digital modes are unusable. B. Either vertically or horizontally polarized antennas may be used for transmission or reception. C. FM voice is unusable. Or D. Both the transmitting and receiving antennas must be of the same polarization. Question 10. What may occur if data signals propagate over multiple paths? A. Transmission rates can be increased by a factor equal to the number of separate paths observed. B. Transmission rates may be decreased by a factor equal to the number of separate paths observed. C. No significant changes will occur if the signals are transmitting using FM. Or D. Error rates are likely to increase. And question 11. Which part of the atmosphere enables the propagation of radio signals around the world? A. The stratosphere. B. The troposphere. C. The ionosphere. Or D. The magnetosphere. And that's it for the T3A lesson. Now that you're done with the quiz, go to hamwhisper.com, go to the exam answers page, and click on the T3A link and get the answers to the quiz. And until next time in lesson 11, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.